In today's video, I'm gonna share with you a secret camera that's just been upgraded with face detection autofocus that uses the micro four thirds lens mount, which means I can use all of my Panasonic lenses on this camera and get reliable, repeatable, and accurate face detection autofocus. Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel folks, my name's Shane. So I'm shooting this entire video with the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. Now a little while back, it got a firmware upgrade giving it this great phase detection autofocus that you're looking at right now. And it works really, really reliably. I've tested this out over the last few days and it's an absolute beast for folks who want great autofocus with a micro four thirds lens mount. I can't believe how well it works. I'm so paranoid being a Panasonic user I keep looking at the LCD screen out of habit, but I know this is going to work. Now I'm gonna shoot this entire video in autofocus mode in aperture priority at 4K 25p. So that's what you're looking at right now. I'm using 25p because I'm in Australia. If I shoot any indoor clips, I don't want any light flicker. But as you can see, this is reliable and repeatable. Awesome stuff. Let's talk about some of the positives when it comes to the OMD EM1 Mark II. Now it has arguably the best in-body image stabilization I've ever seen. And after owning a G85 and a GH5, this camera is far superior. That mixed with the fact it has this face detection and great face detection autofocus makes it a real winner. Another huge benefit to the OMD EM1 Mark II is that it shoots in cinema 4K. Now I'm just using regular UHD right now, but if you wanna shoot in cinema 4K, you have that at your disposal. So as long as you don't need to shoot for more than 30 minutes at a time, this makes a lot of sense, especially if you're coming from a micro four thirds mount where you might already own a lot of lenses like I do. So it was either try and find a camera that has great autofocus that ticks a lot of the video boxes for micro four thirds or go for the Sony a7C. Now the Sony a7C would be a great camera as well. The only one downside to it is that it's expensive and it doesn't really have that many more features than this older camera. So it didn't make a lot of sense. I got this for about a third of the price that I could buy a Sony a7C for. Just to let you know, there are a few limitations when it comes to the OMD EM1 Mark II. The first limitation is the recording limit, which is set at 30 minutes. So it'll cap out after that and you'll just have to start recording again. There's no 4K 60 and there's no slow motion up to 100 or 120 frames per second. So that's a bit of a downer. If you just want this as a straight up vlogging camera or for establishing shots or addressing the camera in regular frame rates, it's an absolute winner. The reason why I wanted this is so I can absolutely just forget about what the autofocus is doing. And if I'm standing in one area mode, when I'm doing videos such as this. So this will be my primary outdoor camera when I'm shooting something where I don't have someone behind the camera, which is pretty much all of the time. Let's check out that autofocus. Look, it works. <laughs> Now let's talk about a couple of things that I noticed when it comes to the Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II image quality compared to my GH5S and GH5. So the first thing I noticed about this camera is that it has the green tint that the GH5 made famous. Actually, this was out before the GH5, but it's one of those things that you'll know as soon as you see it. And if you're unaware of the green tint, you probably won't notice it. But I had to go in camera and reduce the green tint slightly as well. So to get the kind of colors that you're seeing right now, I have had to tweak the camera. The other thing I noticed was it was overly sharp as well. So the sharpening is all the way down on the camera now, and this gives me the best results. I just sort of found that it wasn't as premium of a look as the GH5S, but for the kind of work I'm gonna be doing with it where I'm just gonna be addressing the camera like this, it still looks good, but it doesn't look quite as good as the newer sensors found in something like the GH5S. But all of its positives makes this a very usable camera in the right scenarios. So there's two other downsides to this camera that you need to be aware of. There's no 10-bit codec, so if you like to push your colors around a lot, this won't be the camera for you. Now, Olympus have included OM Log, which is kind of like the V-Log equivalent, but it's nowhere near close to that. It's not even a flat profile, in my opinion. It just looks a little bit odd. In my experiences in this camera so far, the natural profile is by far the best. You can tweak that from the Super Control Panel menu and get some really great results. One of the other reasons why you'd want the OMD M1 Mark II in 2021 is if you're a vlogger. Now, this IBIS system is fantastic. I'm just holding the tripod right now, and there's a number of different ways you can use it. It also doubles with digital image stabilization mixed with sensor shift stabilization. Right now, this is just the sensor shift, and I'm using an unstabilized lens. The Panasonic 12mm 
f1.4 and this is the kind of results you can get out of it just walking along regularly with my arm out like this so overall this is the best stabilization i've seen in a micro four thirds camera hands down i haven't used them all but out of the ones i've tried this is definitely the best now when it comes to the ibis the thing that i wanted to do was save time i want a great out of camera results without the need to run it through some post processing and that's what i got with this camera so for me this works an absolute treat it saves the time of having to download another piece of software then also wait through the stabilization rendering so if you're like me and you like to save time this is a really great choice when it comes to image stabilization now there's two YouTube channels that have been instrumental in my decision to buy this camera. The first one is Peter Gregg from the Peter Gregg YouTube channel. If you don't know him in the Christmas room, I'll link it down in the description and you can check it out. The second person I'd like to thank for putting this camera on the map is Dave Mays from the Kino Tiki YouTube channel. I can highly recommend checking out his video as well. It was a huge influence on me picking up this camera. I'll link it up in the cards or down in the description as well, and you can check out his video. It goes into some of the more specs, a little bit more of the background on the OMD EM1 Mark II, and puts it through its paces in a very different way to this video. Just before I get home, I thought I'd stop and switch lenses over to the Panasonic 15mm f1.7 Prime. I know this is a fan favorite for vlogging. Now there's two different modes when it comes to image stabilization. This is both digital and IBIS, so the sensor is also moving to maintain stabilization. And as you can see, it's buttery smooth. Let's switch it over just to sensor stabilization now. This is sensor stabilization only, nothing else has changed. I've got the camera in exactly the same spot, but you can see a wider field of view, and that's the advantage of both modes. You can either decide that you want it cropped in a little bit more, which helps get rid of those warpy edges, or you can share with your audience exactly what's going on around you. So it's up to you how you choose to use it. I really think this works great. At the end of the day, this camera is a great solution for someone who wants a hybrid camera. It takes fantastic photos, but it also takes great video. While it might not have the cutting edge features as some of the other cameras out there on the market, if you're a micro four thirds shooter, or if you already own a lot of those lenses, this is an absolute no brainer when it comes to buying a camera. Given the price, this is under 1000 US dollars brand new now, paid $1,100 for this camera. This video is not sponsored or anything like that. So if you have enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate that. Now, a lot of people will say, why would you buy a micro four thirds camera in 2021? I don't think they're going anywhere. Don't believe the hype of the internet. If you wanna go full frame, go full frame, but that doesn't mean you can't get great results with a micro four thirds camera. I love the physical size of this too. So if you're gonna be doing any type of traveling, this is a no brainer. The autofocus is fantastic. I just don't think it's the best tool for a studio because of that micro HDMI port or if you're looking for super slow-mo. So keep that in mind overall though, I love this camera and a massive thank you again to the guys who influenced me to get this camera. I highly suggest checking out their videos in the description below as well. And yeah, we're gonna see how it holds up against the GH5 and GH5S on a future video. I'm gonna do some comparisons, so stay tuned for that. Thanks again, catch you soon, see ya. Face detection, man, where's it been all my life?